just sorting this out. Uh, hi everybody, welcome to class on the 18th, Tuesday the 18th of March. What strange times we live in. Uh, I did not think last night that I would be conducting this class via video link. Anyway, there you go. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to build on our figure drawing uh, slash painting from last week uh, where we uh, build up from you build up the figure from a gesture. Now we haven't got the model today so something else has to take the place of the model uh, that would be our imagination. So to start with I want you to make a series of gesture uh, marks that are somewhat figurative but not intentionally figurative. Now these these will build on the uh, well, think think of the, um, the the first gesture drawings we made with the model, the one minute poses. It's uh, th this has a relationship to that. Now, so a series of gestures, <clears throat> quite autonomous, not trying to do anything in particular, just enjoying the feel of the paint on the paper. Uh, now, what am I using? I'm using a, a, a bristle brush, fairly dry, no water at all, and of course our trusty Payne's Grey. Don't we love Payne's Grey? So what have I got? One, two, three, four. Let's do a five, six, seven. Now, when we look at these, they all have a figurative characteristic, but one or two of them will show more promise than the others. So this is where you need to just sit back and scan what you've done to acquaint, reacquaint um, with, with the possibilities in there. So now which one? I think this one, as I'm looking at them, this one seems to speak to me at the moment more than the others. And what I'm seeing here is a fairly strong uh, leg. So let's put let's put it on the ground. Okay. So if we put a little, we could, we could also just do a, a small amount of tone, just to show that. Now, also uh, here we've got the spine, so that looks fairly strong. And it looks like the head or the neck is bent over like that, which would mean the head would be in there somewhere. So you can see how uh, I'm, I'm putting, putting flesh on the gesture and evolving the, the figure into a more um, ad advanced state. <clears throat> now, that might be all I can get from this particular gesture. Uh, for the moment, so that's okay. You can just leave it at that. Then you move on. Is is there is there anything else? Is there any, is there another gesture there that um, I might be able to do something with? Well, here this looks like the curve of a thigh moving down to the leg. Um, <clears throat> can I get another leg in there somewhere? What would that look like? Um, you know, once again. We seem to have a figure uh, that's bent over. Perhaps the hair's falling down, something like that. Um, <clears throat> now, obviously, it's making this part of the gesture redundant, but that's okay. We might just have to go with that. Now, um, so that might be all I can get from that one. So where to from here? This is looking interesting in terms of a torso, so I might just be able to put some mass into the torso. Looks like we've got a head shape happening in here. And not quite sure what's going on down there, but um, it, actually the implication here is to continue that figure down, further down, which would uh, make that gesture somewhat redundant. So, well, we can do that. We'll just take it down. Say the legs are going to be down there somewhere. So we're now incorporating this gesture into the top one. 
So you know you're using you're using your knowledge of the body to make the to flesh these gestures out, and you're also using um, <clears throat> the information that you've gained through figure drawing through the the figure drawing sessions that we did last week and the week before. So you're relying on uh, your your intuition and and your knowledge of the body to uh, to inform and to build build out these gestures.